I'd like to welcome you all back to the IE427 garage. Today we have something a little bit special for you. We actually have a featured car that we're going to be um, focusing on today. And who we have here is Mike Hartman, the owner of the car. And uh, this is a Mark III that uh, Mike built about how many years ago? Ten and a half years. About, about ten years ago. Yeah. And uh, we're going to turn the camera around and we're going to have Mike give us a little tour of the car. To open the book and and kind of walk us through it, Mike. Um, you know, I'm I'm sure all these photos are by your wife. Yeah. Your wife took yeah. the photos, yeah. so uh, you know, like I said, this book probably has a, a somewhat special place in your heart. So you know, as you go through the pages, kind of just e explain to us what each page signifies <laughs> to you. Okay. The kit was delivered in 09. First start November the 10th, and I go carted it December the 10th. So all in that same year. All in that same year. Wow. Yep. I, I it was it was great days, and of course I have the picture sitting in the driver's seat. I think everybody has to take that picture. And then this is. During the build process, that's what probably uh, your go kart. Yeah, my go kart. And then this is uh, after it's completed. That looks like it's up in what Foothill Ranch? Uh, no, actually, I think that picture is taken. I think it's back in, in London, Ohio. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's a cool picture. So, so it looks like know. that's that's your delivery. That's the delivery, and uh, I had been umpiring that day, and I still have my ball bag on my pants. But of course, <laughs> I knew at the time they were going to come, and the game went into extra innings. So I was a wreck and uh, took a picture of the couple that delivered it on my street. My wife was smiling. I was one happy guy. Did you tip your driver? Absolutely. Oh, you bet. And I made him a whole bunch of homemade cookies. Oh, awesome. Yes. They're really nice people. And then that looks like it's you and your wife. Yeah, my wife and I uh, in the car. She was uh, happy as a clam. And a picture uh, of Kuros, who uh, really inspired me to do all this. And my youngest son, who now is 22 and can't wait to drive it, but he's got to wait three more years because insurance for him is won't cover him until he's 25. Yeah, for all you kids that grew up on the interweb, um, we used to have to actually take our pictures and have them developed. <laughs> so we couldn't just digital, digital photography, uh, digital. D digitize them. Yeah, digitize the photography and uh, just print them out that same minute. So, I, I was truly overwhelmed by all the boxes and all the parts and the check and the lists. And that really took a lot of work. A lot of work. And then taking off all the aluminum panels and marking them, which one was over, which one was under, and where they all went, that was a lot. Kuros helped me a lot with that. And then I would just, I wanted to get the car so it could be a roller, so I could move it in my garage. So I kept working on the corners, and uh, I'd lay them all out, and every day I'd put a different corner together, and eventually uh, we got there. I used to take... Uh, the body buck, I put wheels on it, and I rolled it over the car and left it in my driveway and worked on the car in the garage. And the uh, homeowners association said, you can't store a car in your driveway because that one doesn't run. And I said, you're correct. And she said, so you got to move it. So I did. I moved it into the street. <laughs> I said, call the police. <laughs> and that was the end of that. So you can see the parts. The I ordered the engine from uh, Ford Racing, and um, so now we get the answer to the question we yeah. asked earlier that <laughs> never got an answer. Yeah. Four hundred and thirty horsepower, guys. So it looks like what? That's uh, the gas tank laying on the floor of the garage. Yeah. Yes, and then uh, the engine. And then what do we got in this po this one right here? Oh, it looks like that that's when you got the master cylinder. Uh, oh on. yeah, yeah. So is this one of the 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 build parties that you this did? This is uh, the build party with my with all the guys to help me put the engine in, and that was the only help I wanted really. 
And so it looks like there's the engine on the hoist. And you can see on the picture of the engine transmission that's a, a TKO 600, you can see in front and behind the different positions where you can put the shifter. Yeah, so you've got it in the mid-shift position. Right. And then the, the bell housing in there was a scatter shield bell housing. It looks like you got the engine all hoisted up there, ready to go in. I actually do it opposite the way you guys got it. You've got the front end of the car high up in the air. I actually raise the back of the car. <laughs> so it's interesting to see how people do things, you know, differently. It was for me to do and check and make sure everybody was correct and nobody lost any fingers in the process. Yeah, they got more. If you only lose one, you still got nine. That's exactly right. <laughs> I told him, put your finger in there too far, it'll come back too short. So some pictures of Kuros helping me out. and That was pretty exciting that day. Now, did you do any video of any of this stuff while you were doing it? No, I no. My wife took the pictures. I wanted to get the engine in. I wanted to. So you were less about documenting it. You just wanted to get that thing to run and start I wanted driving it. Start pressing the thin pedal on the right, the fun pedal. Now that leads into a good question. Do do you miss the building part of it? I enjoyed the building, but I enjoy more driving it. Is that right? Absolutely. Yes. So uh -oh. I, had, I see a sawzall. <laughs> I had to cut one of the braces in the transmission uh, house on the transmission the frame because the shifter where I wanted to mount it on the mid shift uh, would hit it. So I cut that out and then welded it back in in a different location. Okay, looks like there there the transmission is sitting in there, and so you got it in the spot. And so the caption is cut frame member to allow more room for the mid shifter. So, the next one, it looks like you've got the whole powertrain assembly in, and now you're installing a drive shaft uh, safety loop. So, was this something that you um, you fabricated yourself? Is this something no, you I, got from I somebody? No, I think I bought that from a vendor, from Mike Forte. Okay. And, um, I think Mike still sells that. And I welded it in, and uh, I just, uh, knowing that that drive shaft is right about where my elbow is... <laughs> I didn't want it to come loose. Yeah. Well, and the, the fact that you track the car, too, you uh, you can be up in some high RPMs. If that thing lets go, it can cause a lot of damage. Uh, when I installed the, um, the tunnel cover, I made it so it can come off. Mm. Look at these pictures. It sure is clean. So it looks like you've got uh, the red Coney coilovers on the front of the car. Right. Right. And how many quarts is that oil pan? Eight quarts. Ooh, big one. Yeah. And eight. who 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 what company makes that one? That is actually the, the one that came with the engine from Ford Racing. Okay. Is it a Ford piece or do you remember? Uh, I don't know that. I, I believe it's a Ford piece and add that to the uh the uh remote mounted oil filter and oil cooler that holds a lot of oil. So who's that sitting in the passenger seat? That's uh, my older son. And who's, who's, uh, who's beautiful red car is that? The, the guy right above him with the hat on, that's Kuros. Okay. And that's his car that uh, I really copied mine after. So this was uh, the inspiration for your car other than the color. Right. I saw the car twice, and uh, I said it's got to be the car I need to have. Wow. And so these are going to be the two uh, that you had sign the dash. This is going to be Dan Gurney. Right. I had gone to uh, Oshkosh Air Show, and um, I had the dash with me, and Carol Shelby was there. The line was about 100 people long, and he wanted $300 to sign it. I, and I just said, no, that's not going to happen. I don't want your signature that bad. So I went to All-American Racing and saw Dan Gurney, and I saw Phil Remington, who just said, we're happy to do it. Now, you just told me an interesting story about Phil Remington. And uh, you ran into one of his kids. Right. I was at Cars and Coffee in San Clemente. 
with the cobra, and this uh, young lady walks up and she goes, "That's my dad who signs your dash." And it was Phil Remington's daughter. Oh, that's an awesome story. Which was really neat, really, really neat. He's just such a nice, kind man. I put some plastic over those signatures because I didn't want anything to happen to it <laughs> during the build because I couldn't replace. I couldn't uh, uh, put that back on. Now it, uh, that brings that brings up a good question. Um, what do you clean your dash with to, so you don't mess up those signatures? I use water. That's it, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm really. It no, can get no, dirty there. No, no cleaning agents whatsoever. Just no, a damp cloth and some, some that's water. Silver permanent marker. Okay. So in this next picture, you can see I, I have a. We had talked earlier about a partial kit, and those are um, all billet parts. There, where the oil filter is, I have a temperature controlled. A valve that doesn't allow the oil to flow through the oil cooler unless it's warmed up. Mm -hmm. um, I have an additional fuel filter here. Uh, I'm running a mechanical fuel filter on uh, this uh, by Edelbrock that uh, puts out a lot. A uh, fuel pump. Yeah, fuel, a fuel pump. Right, I'm sorry. Right. Fuel pump. Right. And the only Chevy part on the whole build is this little riser right here. For the coolant. Oh, the otherwise, coolant neck, yeah. Yeah, otherwise it's all Ford. Right, right. It's all Ford, even if you look on a lot of dashboards of these, the start button I mounted, they're chrome. If it's a chrome one, it's from a Honda S2000. I, I can't have that on this. It's a Ford car. <laughs> the one I have is off of a GT40. Okay. It costs me quite a bit more. Oh. But, but, but you didn't want that Honda part on there. <laughs> that's correct. That's funny. So you can so, see my fuel filter. I can put it there because my pumpkin doesn't move. Right, right. And it looks like, oh, this is a, a view of the IRS in the back, so you can see the axles. The tone rings looks like they're still on the, yeah, uh, yeah. outside of the yes. differential housing. And since this time I put on new drive shafts, these did not Those are the originals? The Those right, are the original. right. In the garage, I, I, I turned the body upside down and coated it with a truck liner. You remember which product you used? Boy, I, I don't recall. That was 10 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> you should have wrote it in this book. Yeah, I know. So that worked out really well. It, it eliminates a lot of the cracks in the body from rocks from the underside hitting. So the... the the get, stones get absorbed. The energy gets absorbed. The energy in the, absorbed yeah, in the, the truck bed lining. But there is companies, I don't have them on my car, that make a fender liner that you can buy. Okay. So it looks like it's starting to look like a car. Yeah, I put the body on, checked it out, and I put in one of Cannonball's uh, drop boxes in the trunk so I'd have a lot more room, and that's been a godsend. Now, have you ever taken... Uh, the car for weekend getaways with the wife? Yes. And how was that as far as uh, it works. space planning? <laughs> well, she's lucky. She's small. So her clothes don't take up as much space. I, on the other hand, it doesn't work. But I found two suitcases that fit underneath the back of my car. And just truck. spoiler alert for you guys that are out there building Mark IVs, the... Uh, the upper shelf of the trunk is smaller on the Mark IVs versus the Mark III. Uh, so those bags don't fit in your car. <laughs> so that was, that was that. And then on the top here, uh, you can see where the normal spot is where it's mounted. And I moved it quite a bit. For the shifter, of that. right. For the shifter. Right. And the top panel of that, uh, I just made it so I can take it off. Now, is it, uh, is it this, the this material that you got with the kit? Yeah, or did yeah. you purchase um, thicker material and, and make a new one? No, it, it's the material. It came, it came with the kit, and then I, when I carpeted it, I put, I put a fat mat on top and then carpet that overlaps the sides, and then I seamed the edges so when it's finished in the car, you don't really notice that. Wow. But it makes it really nice so you can access the transmission, add the fluid, check on your drive shaft. And there's Very a lot good. going on under there. Very good. I had this big air filter that I thought looked really cool, but it wouldn't fit. 
Yeah, I have one of those upstairs if you'd like it back, you know, like <laughs> like one back. So I took it off, and, but it looked good in the picture. Yeah. So now we're loading the car up to take down to the bat. And uh, I borrowed a truck and I borrowed a trailer. Because <laughs> at the time I didn't have any of that. Yeah. Took it down to get it painted and then... Uh... Well, you know, one thing that I just... I, that just came to mind as I'm looking at Dell's pin drive wheels. Yeah. Um, you really couldn't use donor wheels. <laughs> so yeah, you yeah. were kind of forced to get those wheels and tires mounted um, early on your build because of the pin drive length on everything. And I, I feel the tires look and the wheels look correct on the car. But tracking the car becomes a problem because if I want race tires, I have to buy a complete set of pin drive wheels. Right. They're not cheap. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. So it looks like this is the completed go-kart. The uh, go-kart with the different hoses for the footbox cooling. And I also have an access panel I, I put into where my relay is. Yeah, and again, you guys with the Mark IVs don't realize that that access cover that becomes um, prevalent on all the Mark IVs wasn't included on any of the Mark III's and before. We had to actually cut those access panels and make covers for them. And I think this is bump steer, I believe. I don't remember, but that's a long time ago. Yeah, those are that's yeah, a bump, bump steer, steer kit. kit. Probably from uh, Mike Forte as well. Okay. So now we're getting into the finishing stuff here. Looks yes. like you got uh, the carpeting going in, the seats, the harness. Carpeting, you can see the seam across the bottom of the panel where my shifter is. And then I, the battery box I put in, which isn't a problem because the pumpkin doesn't move. And the drop box is here. And what I did is I just got a piece of aluminum, carpeted it and seamed it, and that comes off. So I can get drop, get to that to that drop box. All right. And it looks like you've got some uh, aftermarket parts on your uh, your car as well. Um, I see something here, Russ Thompson's pedal. Russ Thompson pedal, and I had him uh, redo the shift, the uh, turn indicator. Okay, and then you got a Ford GT button, which you just talked about. Right, and um, these are Sumitomo tires that were good to roll it around in my garage only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they're a little hard. Yeah, they uh, they don't give you a little bit of traction, but I drove, I drove this go kart a hundred miles in my neighborhood. No one said anything, and it sure was fun. That you know of. That I know of. That's correct. No one said anything to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so. Now, are those the speed hut gauges? Yes, those are the ones that come with the kit. I had bought those classic gauges with the kit. Okay. And. Uh, as it says right here, TVM, TYVM, which means thank you very much, Frank Kieske. <laughs> and the car started to come together. And it looks like the carpet that you used is kind of like a, a, a loop. Carpeting. Yeah, it's a short loop. I, I felt from the homework that I did that that was period correct. Then we're down at Jeff Miller's place down in Temecula. Now, who's and, that guy in the driver's seat? Because it doesn't look, this guy looks a lot longer, uh, younger than you. Well, that guy didn't that, have gray hair either. Is that your kid? <laughs> <laughs> looks just like me. Even the pants fit looser then. So, down there, uh, I dropped the body off. He fit the doors, the uh, trunk, and the hood, and I left it there. Brought it home and and then the pictures you're seeing here are when he told me to come on down and he'll put the body on. So Jeff came down, bad back and all, and uh, put the body on the car. Uh, and uh, I was one happy camper. I just had to go home and put on all the bling. Jeff looks a lot younger, too. <laughs> this was uh, 10, 11 years ago. But it was, the paint job was beautiful. And you can see, we talked earlier about the scoop. So you can see 
in the one shot there where the scoop's missing because he cut it out. Then he mounted the, the new scoop on using screws. You don't want to use rivets on fiberglass because it causes it to crack. Boy, there's not a whole lot of room between that oil cleaner <laughs> or air cleaner assembly and, and that hood. And that's why I went to that new one I showed you. Yeah. Now, did you borrow the same trailer and the same truck twice? <laughs> I absolutely did and filled it up with gas. You got your money's worth out of that. That was a good deal. That was a good deal. These are the pictures when it was shiny, brand new. You can see in this picture here where the carpet stops on the side of the transmission housing and that whole housing just comes off. All you do is just undo the screws for the shifter boot and take the shifter off and it just it so makes it so nice. Now, have you ever had that panel off? Yes, many, many times. Oh, okay. Many times. Just before I track it, I check the the uh, bolts on the drive shaft. All right. And I put I put bumperettes on my car because the quick jacks to Suck. me <laughs> All they do is catch your ankles and bite them as bad as the exhaust pipes do. People that don't know it's hot. Yeah. Yeah, it was there. Yeah, I didn't go there. So this, this, I entered my car the first year. Actually, what the sheet metal around the radiator wasn't even complete. I entered it in the the uh, Huntington Beach Factory Five Car Show, and I won Best Roadster. I also won Best Ford Racing Engine. I don't know how many other guys had those engines. But I won that. And uh, there's a picture of Dave Smith shaking my hand. And then while I was back at Factory 5, back east, I had him autograph it. And so this, this car show is uh, the Huntington Beach car show? Yes. I recognize that car that's next to yours. <laughs> So at this point, my license plate stands for I love STRS, where in California is the State Teacher Retirement System. So it's either going to get me applause or shot. <laughs> then I took it to some car shows and uh, started meeting the family. Is that your car? <laughs> it is. <laughs> I didn't know I made your book. <laughs> yeah, well, I can tell it says Slytherin. Yeah. So, and uh, and the sans, two sans paint. Yeah, the, the uh, two people standing to to the left there, both of them built cars. This is the guy that the guy in the shirt there is the guy that built the car. Then he moved moved to I think Nevada this goofy guy it. right here might be me. <laughs> so I entered car shows and did you have uh, my permission to print that picture of I me? did you gave me permission <laughs> I just lost the piece of paper <laughs> so this is a car show in 2011 at Seal Beach so you, you actually entered the car in quite a few yeah this car show here was uh, on the Santa Monica Pier and I competed against all of the LA Cobras. It was it's put on by Los Angeles uh, Cobra Club. Wow. And I got second place. And I, you know, I couldn't complain. It earned best of show at Hooters. Yeah, I don't think your wife was there that night. <laughs> Then I went back to my high school, Venice High School, and they had a centennial car show, and I got second place there. You remember who won first? I, I don't know. Kind of, I think the car that won was an AMX. Oh, well, that's a cool car, too. Yeah. Hmm. Used to go on a lot of cruises. My dog, take my family. That's a picture of myself and my daughter, and uh, that's up in Malibu. Yeah, and then we drop down into Zuma. Right. That's pictures right on the beach there. Mm-hmm. 
That's a beautiful ride if anybody's looking for a great ride in uh, Southern California. And this was a ride, drive with some friends uh, driving out towards Julian. This happens to be right near a really nice bakery. Try Julian Pies if you ever get out that way. Another nice ride. That's the conclusion of my book. And that's it. So, but not uh, the con by far, not the conclusion of the driving of my car. No, the, the story goes on. I do have pictures, they're not in the book, of you know, different racetracks I've been to, which, which is uh, really a lot of fun. But you can't tell it's me because I have a helmet on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the car is absolutely incredible. It really changed my life. And uh, every time I go in the garage and I see it, it just brings nothing but smiles from Smiles to my face. Miles of smiles and lots of friends out there. And anytime you drive it, I always tell my wife when people wave to you, I said, they're not waving at me. They're waving at you. They think you're good looking. <laughs> and she thinks it's the car. I go, no, it's her. So, you know, it, it goes miles. It was an incredible investment. And the return is more than a million times. Well, Mike, again, I want to thank you so much for uh, sharing your time with us here in the shop and sharing your time with all, uh, all those that are going to watch this. So thanks again. It was great. All right, I want to thank you guys all for watching. I really want to thank Mike uh, for bringing his car out here today and uh, spending time with us and giving us a, uh, a brief explanation uh, of how he built his car and uh, his insight on the car hobby. So we'll see you guys all next time. Have a great day.